Hello everybody and welcome to a modding focus video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about teams that have either one or two characters that you can focus on modding for and the rest of the team will do just fine. Uh, this is for people that don't have a really deep mod pool and they really need to be choosy how they're allocating their mods which in a way is everybody. Uh, of course we are starting with Imperial Troopers as you see here and the two characters we want to focus on are Admiral Piet and Dark Trooper and maybe a slight focus on a third but it doesn't matter exactly who. Um, so I don't have Moff Gideon here. A lot of people are using Moff Gideon with uh, Imperial Remnant Nest. So that's why I don't have him um, and it's just I don't know it's just I don't know it might be more economical to use Stark because uh, of other reasons. Uh, but we're going to be starting with Piet, and he's the one you want to put the most speed into. I mean, this is obvious to a lot of people, uh, but maybe you haven't thought through it all the way. But with him, you want him to go first. I have mine modded a little bit slower than I could have, but you want him to go first uh, because you want him to get the ball rolling. Under Veers' lead, anytime you gain a buff, you gain 10% turn meter as long as you have uh, Piet's Zeta on Emperor's Trap. He's going to start his turn. Everyone's going to stack up, get a stack of Emperor's Trap and gain 10% turn meter. Uh, and then you, the the most common move you're going to start with almost all the time is you're going to mark someone, usually Dark Trooper, uh, and everyone's going to gain offense up for two turns. So that's another buff on everyone. So that gives you 20% turn meter. Um, and before I get to Dark Trooper, you just need one other character to kind of bridge the gap. Uh, so after they get 20% turn meter, they are ready to take another move. And how we calculate that. So I have 267 on Veers. Uh, what we do is divide by 0.8. So whatever turn meter amount you're gonna get, uh, if it's 20%, you divide by 0.8. If it's 30%, you divide by 0.7. Uh, in the instance of like, if BB-8's on a full G uh, General Grievous team, they have five droids, 40% turn meter, you divide by 0.6. That's just how it works for their effective speed. And he's at 333.75. That's a little bit slower uh, than we need to bridge the gap in my particular case. It is almost there. Uh, I got 337 compared to 333. Uh, and then Stark is 270. So that will actually do it for me. I think I set this up a while ago to be right. 270 divided by 0.8. Um, it 337.5 so that would mean after Piet goes Stark would go with no turn meter break uh, he would get full turn meter so with that out of the way that's the speed turn meter element of starting out and that's why you want Piet but the next character you want to focus on modding for is Dark Trooper Dark Trooper is going to be assisting constantly if we gave him um, the inevitable failure with this ability like I said that whenever Admiral Piet um, I use the basic, in the languages it's actually in the basic, uh, he calls a random empire ally to assist but also inevitable uh, allies with inevitable failure to assist. That's why we put it on Dark Trooper. He's going to assist all the time so anytime he get used to the basic, Dark Trooper is going to come in too uh, and hit with his super hard punch and sometimes he hits multiple times. Uh, so his damage just skyrockets. Most of the time you can crit if he has advantage, but most of the time you don't have that. Uh, so you just want to get his offense as high as you can. I have mine R7, um, that means offense triangle, offense cross, offense set. That's what you want. You don't want he like health, you don't want speed. Speed isn't the worst necessarily because he could be the, bri the gap bridge or two, like minus 275, that's actually going second. I don't need any particular character in there uh, to bridge a gap between Piet and uh, the next character, but just sink as much damage as you, into him as you can. Um, I don't get as much use out of this team anymore, uh, but most people are not in my situation. So if you're early game or mid game, just focus on Piet and Dark Trooper. He can be your your uh, gap bridger if you need up to 270, and he can even give turn meter. You don't have to start with his base. He can give turn meter to the whole team. 10% turn meter for each Dark Attack Trooper, Dark Trooper. Uh, so that's 40% if he's starting out with uh, his four stacks as normal. Uh, and that is it for Imperial Troopers, just Piet, Dark Trooper, 1-2 Punch. Next we've got another early game staple team that is still really strong into the late game, that is Phoenix, which is obviously bolstered up by Captain Rex. 
And he is our number one guy. If we don't have enough mods to go around, we need to focus all our mods onto him. And number two, I'm gonna argue, is probably Sabine. Uh, so Rex, why do you want him to go first? Uh, he gains a lot of speed additionally, so like plus 25 speed normally uh, with his Zeta. And when he has, uh, when he's in Grand Arenas with his Omicron, he gets another 25 speed. So he's fast to begin with, but you wanna give him even more speed. And why is that? Because uh, he opens up with Suppressing Fire and then for each debuff inflicted, and this move does tenacity down and daze, so that's a potential 10 debuffs against all enemies. That's a potential 50% turn meter. It gets 5% turn meter for each debuff inflicted by the ability, or all Phoenix allies do. So he, he goes first and gets the team going, uh, and also why they're so good against Reva in most cases is you are gaining turn meter whenever you get inflicted with a debuff, and what is what do the Inquisitors always inflict on you? Purge. Uh, so right now not really working because of doubt Kron's preventing uh, turn meter, but normally that's why they have an infinite loop. Um, you also want to focus on him for other things like damage. He's not a character where it's just speed. Piet, you're not as concerned about damage or anything, but I'd argue you want a crit damage triangle on him. You want as much potency as you can get because even with tenacity down, uh, sometimes it can be resisted or sometimes you don't have tenacity down and you want to land a stun on somebody. Um, offense I didn't sink as much into, but crit damage for sure. And then potency on the cross. Offense is also uh, an arguable option there. Uh, and then Sabine. Uh, you want her going second. Uh, this is only with her Zeta, and this is for more later game players because um, she's hard to farm. If you're at the beginning of the game, you might not have her. And you need her Zeta too. She's going to get out and throw a bunch of staggers out there. I, I am a huge proponent of Rex going first and not Sabine because some might argue that you want to get the stagger out there first and then hit all the staggers with Rex's AoE. I do not like that approach. I want Tenacity down out there first before we get this. Um, and also Rex is going to generate all the turn meter to everyone himself and <clears throat> through his AoE and Sabine is not generating turn meter for your team. She's just taking it away. So you want to let as much time as you can let pass before you get the stagger out, it actually makes the stagger more effective. Um, in a perfect world, yes, it would be nice for her to go first if you if this stagger was irresistible, but it is not. <clears throat> so you want to focus on speed for her, get her fast up there alongside Rex, not exactly as fast by mine 305, big three speed slower or something, and then potency as well. I mean, you want potency for her for sure because there are instances where you're not going to have that tenacity down and your potency is paramount here. Um, you don't have to worry about it for her armor shred. That's not re that's not resistible, and it's technically not a debuff, which is weird because it's red. Uh, but yeah, that's how it works. So that is it for Phoenix. I'm not going to talk about the modding for the others, but Rex and then Sabine, one, two punch. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Bounty Hunters, and this is another team I miss using as much as I used to. It's a really fun team, really strong and resilient uh, unless it gets completely overpowered which is kind of happening now and there's a lot of options you have for bounty hunters i have zam here but that is not important what's important today we're going to be talking about bosk and grief karga and, and that's it these others this is what i kind of standard use to get the contract fastest uh, but bosk and grief is what we are concerned about especially if you're like a newer player you want to sink as much not only good mods but gear on the boss as possible just because he is keeping the team alive and he has one of the best ships in the game and what you want to do with him is a lot of speed and a lot of protection and i would argue a lot of defense um you can also some people do tenacity i think that's a little bit of a post outdated approach uh that was back when uh he, he was put on defense all the time and people would use Jedi Training Ray to counter him. I don't think Tenacity is as in vogue anymore, especially since you're using him on offense a lot of the time. Uh, but yeah, speed and protection. Why do you want protection? Because his leadership gives extra max protection after the modding. So like the more you have, the more you get. And you have plus 100% defense while at full health. Doesn't matter how much your health you have. If you lose a tiny bit of health, you're gonna lose that defensive boost. Uh, but I would argue speed set and defense set as uh, because defense is way better for him than a health set. Um, defense is affecting how the protection, how your protection total goes down um, in the way that you're taking damage, not like the actual number. 
Uh, but the more defense, the harder it is to get through the protection. And then speed, what you want to do is, here's where the one-two punch comes in. You start with a taunt from boss, even if it would be nice to call the mass assist. Uh, and it is a nice thing to do. You want to taunt first because you gain frenzy. And new players, it would be easy to miss this because it doesn't have a description of what frenzy is. Frenzy is a rare buff that gives you 100% turn meter if an ally uses a special ability. Uh, so he gains frenzy for three turns. That means the next character to go and who's a special is going to give a turn back to Bosk. And then we have Grief Karga. My speed on Bosk is 320. My speed on Grief is 319. That means this is the closer you can get it because you don't want him tied. You don't want Grief going first. You get Boss to go taunt. Grief will go immediately following unless there's some crazy tie or turn meter generation on the other side. And then you will call a mass assist uh, with everyone. If it's a taunt, you can get past the taunt. But best case scenario, you're targeting the weakest ally already. Call the mass assist and boss will go and use his mass assist. And everyone's going to hit the same character. Even if you don't have multiple hit characters like Benek Shondo in there, uh, you only need 10 hits on the weakest enemy uh, to get your contract. So it's a pretty easy contract to get in the best case scenario. Um, other primaries that you want to worry about for grief, I would argue he is in just speed territory. Um, if you don't have the perfect protect, uh, perfect primaries, you don't have to worry. Go as much speed as you can as possible. In a perfect world, I would load him up with protection as well. He has a high base protection, and the same thing goes with boss of survivability. Uh, however, you see, I have defense, cross, and triangle. Why is that? I, and I don't even have a secondary set. It's because I want him fast, but there aren't many characters that can make use of a mod like this. Other examples would be like Rex on a 501st team or Hoda, where you just want speed and don't really care too much about what the primary is. Uh, but I have just settled with them on Grief Karka. And this is rare for me. I don't like to have, like, give up on a second set. Um, but I did that here just for the benefit of this speed set. So 25, 24. Uh, and that was getting me exactly one speed under boss. Uh, so that is Bounty Hunters. Um, Mando generates turn meter for the team. Uh, so, and that's going to happen no matter what his speed is. So he kind of cycles through his turns faster. He gets more turn meter to himself. So that's why we're focusing on boss and grief. And that is Bounty Hunters. And next we got a team that's a little bit newer in the viability because of Zori. This is more, more or less a year old. Um, and a lot of players are have this team or are working towards it because of Lightspeed Bundles. And I talked about it. I had a full video on the Resistance Lightspeed Bundle when it first came out. Uh, but if you didn't catch that, the modding on this team, uh, there's a lot. There's Most of the characters you don't have to worry too much. But the one-two punch we're looking at is Resistance Hero Finn and then Zori second. Uh, why you want Finn to go first is he has pretty decent base speed to begin with. It's like 183 uh, at gear 13 without any mods. Mine is pretty slow. I actually need to work on his mods, get him faster. Why you want him to go is he'll open up. This move passes a turn to someone else or swaps turn meter, which is even better. So he's going to get a second turn following that. Uh, and then once he has inspired... Your whole team basically has retribution all the time. And then extra defense, extra tenacity. It's actually, an, it is a really powerful unique. I think this is probably the best thing about him. And it's just really, really nice. Uh, so you pass the turn off to someone else. If they're close to him in speed, he'll get another turn soon. Um, and then he can use his mass assist AOE that also heals people. Uh, which is kind of interesting. It's like there was a bomb and your whole team gets cleansed. Very interesting. Um, I would argue that the second fastest character you want is Zori. Uh, Poe will get the turn. Uh, you'll usually pass the turn from Resistance Hero Finn to Resistance Hero Poe, and then he will give Inspire to someone else. Um, why you want to give to, to uh, Poe is that turn meter swap with Resistance Hero Finn inspires Poe, and then when Poe is inspired, he can inspire others during his turn. So you get him inspired, use a special, and then you can get uh, Zori inspired. But we don't necessarily need our best mods on him. I think Zori should have the second best mods. Um, one, because she's super fast already. 
well, maybe not super fast. Uh, she's 170 base speed at gear 13, uh, which is still pretty fast. Slower than resistance hero Finn, but pretty fast. Uh, so you're going to have Finn go past turn to Poe. Poe will go, and then probably Zori coming in, unless you have your Poe really fast, or Finn can get another turn. But she's just going to get out there fast and do an AoE, like, or a mass assist, and you can just wreck one character. Like, the, the speed at which a character will go down to this team, if they get going, is insane. It's just a blitz. So you're going with Finn past the, the Poe. He juices up the team with Inspired, that they're doing extra damage uh, per hit while they're Inspired. And if he's Inspired Zori, she calls Mass Assist, and then um, these three are Inspired are doing extra damage from that Assist. And then whenever Finn gets his turn again, he's going to do a Mass Assist, and they're all going to be Inspired and hit crazy hard and kill someone. Um, so it's not super deep. I mean, this team is just insane. Like, all the mechanics are really deep. I'm not going to, like, dive into that. Uh, but Zori, I just have her modded... Um, for speed, but also damage, like the crit damage there. Offense might be a good idea because she doesn't have super high uh, crit chance, and she does she does physical damage, uh, but her crit chance is not super high, although we do hit crits a uh, fair amount because uh, we do have Vulnerable getting out there from Resistance Hero Poe. Uh, and then Protection, she just, has a, she just has a crazy high protection and health pool. I mean, health and protection, it's insane. Like, she does not look that durable. She's uh somewhat slender of frame and she's just they just granted her like uh 62 000 protection at a base 77 thousand health like health or protection just insane so hard to kill her um you barely get to take a chance a stab at her because she's stealth all the time but just an insane character like oh imbalance with the stat distribution um so that that's probably that's an even bigger reason than just like turn meter order that you really want to load in on Zori. Next team we got is one of my favorites and immediately you're going to be saying what is this team? This isn't actually a functional team because Starkiller would not go with an otherwise full Embar team. Um, this team is just representative of a general Palpatine team which I think everyone should have. Uh, if you do have Starkiller you run a Palpatine Martin Jade Starkiller plus a Jedi and light side Ufu. Um, if not you're going to want a full either Empire or Sith team and have Darth Vader in there, Thrawn, and so on, someone else, so on and so forth. I do like Empire um, instead of adding Sith because the Empire are the ones that get turn meter from inflicting debuffs. Everyone gets turn meter from debuffs expiring if you have the Zeta, but Empire gains turn meter just from debuffs. And uh, you might not notice that if you're using just Darth Vader all the time because he is Empire and Sith gets the healing and the turn meter benefits. Uh, so what are the one, two bunch we're talking about? First is clearly Mara Jade. We want Mara Jade to be the fastest because she has a really high base speed, um, close to 200 without mods at gear 13. 192, I think this is, which is crazy fast. She gets out there and she was just designed for Emperor Palpatine. Side note, you don't really need some of these Zetas. Like the Zetas aren't that impactful, uh, but she gets Tenacity down on everyone, and that's five debuffs there, right there, because Tenacity down can't be resisted. And then through Palpatine's lead, she gets 100% turn meter that way. And she does another AoE, does shock and stagger for two turns, and offense down, like three debuffs, and that's gonna get her another turn. And then she can use a basic. Um, and if, <laughs> if Palpatine, even without Star Killer, Palpatine is assisting this basic. So you're gonna hit one of those staggers and just load up on some damage. So right away, by her going first, she's gonna take like three turns in a row and and even without that's assuming you're not in tw with her omicron if you're in tw with her omicron she gets the bonus like basically basically a bonus turn 100 percent turn meter right away um and then she's gonna do her one turn get a bonus turn basic or get 100 percent turn meter another 100 percent turn meter another basic so she just runs circles around people uh so what do you want on her mainly speed and potency um the tenacity down does do a lot it helps with everything but there's such a thing as cleansing people can cleanse it off so you still want potency no matter what and sometimes you really need to just start with the uh the stagger and shock if you can if you have high enough potency you could land the stagger without the tenacity down and then use this to hit all the staggers so that's up to you i think there's a a realistic debate about that what's better or not um i focus more on speed as opposed to potency because i do have a potency cross um but there's uh, there's a trade-off you have to make when you're trying to decide if you want a super fast 
mod with a super fast speed secondary or if you want really high potency secondaries. I try to squeeze in potency when I can, um, but I don't always get it. It's like this one, I have the best of both worlds. It's a speed set and it has high potency. Uh, this one is actually probably something I can improve. It is a potency set, but I don't have any potency there and it's 20 speed. So I can find something better for her there, I'm sure. And then I was able to squeeze in some potency on the arrow. Uh, and second, and this isn't always applicable because Sometimes you're running them with Star Killer and you don't have Darth Vader there, but I would argue Darth Vader is the most impactful. If you don't have Mara Jade, he is the most impactful under a Palpatine team. Um, but a lot of people, once they have Mara Jade, even if you're running Palpatine and Mara Jade with Vader, uh, you still want Mara Jade faster. Uh, he gets a lot of speed uh, just as a bonus from his unique. He gets eight speed for each ally, for each. Empire ally, Sith ally, and then if you're facing Jedi and Rebels, you get even more. But him and Palpatine are both Sith and Empire, so they count double. So you get plus 16 speed from him, plus 16 from Palpatine. If you have those two together, at minimum, you're getting plus 32 speed. Um, a lot of people are familiar with Darth Vader. I don't have mine super fast. I have I have him more focused for damage. I don't use mine even a ton anymore. It's kind of sad. Uh, but I'm just thinking when he does get a turn, which if you run him with R and Jade, he should get a turn anyway, because... Uh, He'll hit staggers and debuffs will expire, and then he'll get turn meter. And you just want you want his turns to count more. You want him to get out there and just crack some skulls because you pop it. If you're under Palpatine, you start with the Force Crush actually, because you'll get a um, bunch of debuffs, get another turn, and then Merciless Massacre, and then you do a million turns in a row. Um, and I would argue you save Force Crush, the second Force Crush, for after. Merciless Massacre expires, so you can get around to another turn and be really close to Merciless Massacre. Um, but you do want to focus on him. Um, just give him your mod love if you're running this team. Uh, he wants a lot of stuff. He wants damage, either through offense, crit damage. Uh, he wants speed to a degree. He wants potency. There's a lot of things you need. I would sweat too much to health and protection. Um, he does have decent bases, and you could get him more survivable, but he's an offensive weapon. You want him just to get going. Um, and it's hard to split between all of them, but I would say don't worry about crit chance. I have some incidental crit chance on secondaries, like just here and there, uh, but I'm not focusing on crit chance at all because Merciless Massacre, once you have the Zeta and have everything leveled up, you get 50% crit chance from that anyway. So he does not need much to get to 100% crit chance. Uh, Mine is R8, yes, I granted a little high, but even at R7, R6, maybe R5, you're close to 50% anyway. Uh, so that is it for the Palpatine team, just those two. Pal gets a lot of turn meter on his own anyway. You don't need him going first, uh, just Martin Jade for sure, and then Darth Vader. In the Pen Ultimate Squad we're talking about today is the Bad Batch, where you just need one or two really well-modded characters to get going. I um, recently made a video on them, so I did talk about this recently as well. But number one is Echo. Echo is naturally pretty fast, so it's easy to get him fast. He has plus he has 198 speed base at gear 13, super fast. Um, and a lot of people just have him fast. Like a lot of people know this, they have him fast. But you want him to go first and then use his um, buff removal days move uh, because if you are picking and choosing your, your targets and you start against a team that has any buffs to start just at the gate, uh, you're gonna generate a bunch of turn meter for the team. Even if there's one buff on every enemy, that's going to be 25 turn meter, 25% turn meter uh, for Bad Batch allies. It's also going to dispel and get things going. So once you dispel, they all have days. And the next person you want to go is Tech. Now you don't need him super, super fast. I do have him decently fast, plus 134. His base speed is much slower than Echo, so it's hard to get exactly the same. Uh, there's like... 38 more speed on Echo than Tech to start at Gear 13. Uh, and for him, you really care about just the potency and the speed. Same thing with Echo. I mean, he's mainly potency and speed. Or he's primarily speed, and then potency is a focus, but the days can't be resisted. That's the big thing. Uh, but why you want Tech to go after is if everyone's days, he's going to stun the whole enemy team. Um, so you're picking and choosing your enemies uh, if they have they get a ton of tenacity or they have tenacity up that's gonna happen when you remove the buffs it's harder to get going with them 
Uh, but otherwise, you still just want tech fast because he's going to be giving out translation to the allies. And then even his basic, if you get around and he's not off cooldowns, his basic can reset cooldowns for allies through the translation. So you really want these two going a lot, taking a lot of turns. Um, the more turns tech takes, the more cooldown refreshes you get on everyone. And it's just really great. And then Echo, even after just going first, you still care about him taking turns uh, because he has great abilities. This assist call. Um, that can reset his cooldowns. Essentially, if you have three stacks of translation, you're calling tech to assist and therefore reducing more cooldowns to get to this another round of this, which is just an amazing ability. Take all the buffs off, get more turn meter, rinse and repeat. Uh, not going to go into the modding for the rest of them, and they are kind of decently important, but to get the bad batch started, you want Echo to go and then tech. And our final discussion today centers around an oldie but goodie CLS squad, which has come into its final form for several years now after we got 3PO and Chewie. Uh, but the primary modding concern, I would argue, is CLS. I don't think that's hotly contested. But number, number two, I would say is Chewbacca. And my mods right now don't necessarily line up with my recommendation um, in general, uh, but we'll talk about that. So. One big reason you want to focus on CLS's mods and his stats overall is because the 3 view on Chewie is unique. He takes 40% of all these stats from CLS, health, protection, offense, defense, potency, and tenacity, just a lot, and shares them with the team. He takes 40% for himself, gives 20% to the rest of the team. So you want a lot of speed on him, you want a lot of offense on him, you want a lot of tenacity. I don't sink as much into the armor, um, that could be as well. What you don't need a ton of on him is crit chance and crit damage. Um, he doesn't feed crit chance and crit damage to everyone. Uh, so you just want really offense as your focus. I would say offense set, not crit damage set uh, for your triangle. If you're not going tenacity, I would say offense triangle or uh, cross plus sign, whatever it is. But tenacity it is a good focus for him. And the reason for that well, one, you're going to be passing some tenacity out to everyone. Uh, but from his his leadership, whenever... Uh, or where is it? Actually, I'm getting my wires crossed. You don't benefit from... You don't get turn meter from resisting debuffs. Um, however, one reason you want to focus on tenacity as opposed to like potency or something, it's because you are rewarded. Uh, and he does recover health protection from resisting, so that is good for him. Um, but whenever an enemies resist a detrimental effect, as long as you have this Zato on the lead, uh, allies are going to gain 5% turn meter. So in a way you're rewarded for having less potency, which is kind of weird. You still want to land the debuffs, but it's just like, if you don't land them, there's a great consolation prize, which is turn meter for everyone. Sometimes you can really focus on doing that. Uh, but it's really just, I mean, the stat passing around for him. He's also, most of the time, the fastest. He's the easiest to get to be the fastest. Start out with him. Uh, a lot of times I start removing a taunt, or he does his basic, inflicts some some uh, debuffs and generates turn meter for the team, or gets some resisted, generates turn meter for the team. Uh, and then the next I'd argue is Chewbacca. And whether you're putting this team on offense or defense, I actually think there's a great argument to mod him like a tank, like high protection and defense. Right now I have him modded for the crate raid, so it's not going to match up. Uh, cause I'm try I needed to get him over 10,000 damage and just as much speed as I could. But if you mod him for just pure protection, for the longest time I had him just modded for pure protection with defense sets. Because if he's on defense, people know to go after Chewbacca first to get rid of the guard and to get rid of all the assisting. Um, and if you're on offense, like, if you lose Chewbacca, that's, I don't know, it's a big problem. Uh, so, uh, I think the most common way to mod him is offense, offensive oriented, like just a damage dealer and attacker, but I really just think you want him surviving. And uh, he does a ton of damage already without even, he just does a bunch of bonus damage, like 20% of their max health. Like that happens whether he has a ton of offense or not. So that part is not being affected by anything, like even if his damage went down to zero that was still that would still be impacting things and he's not from just his normal damage he doesn't put up the kind of numbers that really like wow me or impress me so i my personal recommendation is mod him like a tank after the crate raid is over um, and of course the rest of these guys are important to mod as well 
but if you don't have Mazda go around, you want to focus on Luke, Chewbacca. Um, again, with the protection and defense focus, I do still think you should have a lot of speed on him to cycle through his turns, but he is assisting a lot. Um, but speed focus is more for CLS, um, and then even Han Solo or C-3PO can make use of that. But yeah, Luke and Chewbacca are most important on this team. So that's it, seven teams that require great modding on either one or two characters to get going uh, and be a much better version of themselves. Uh, I hope to do more videos like this, give me suggestions on what teams you would like to hear next, and I hope this helps you, uh, especially if you're a newer player or a minigame player. Uh, thanks everyone for watching, don't forget to like if you did enjoy, and I'll see you later.